on today's Tech Up for Churches, five iTunes podcasting myths. Hi, and welcome again to Tech Help for Churches. This is the show where every week I help you with new media, social media, well, the internet for your church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. Last time, we talked about five podcast hosting myths, and I'd originally conflated these two, and then I thought, well, why not split them up? Because there's five things I can talk about in iTunes. There's five things I can talk about with hosting, so let's take a look at those. So, Getting uh, first to the first myth is ratings improve iTunes rankings directly. No, they don't. I'm sorry to tell you this. I, I keep hearing podcasts, and I listen almost exclusively to podcasts, so I keep hearing people that should know better say, Oh, make sure you give me ratings and reviews, because that'll help me climb the charts in iTunes. Uh, No, it it doesn't. It's how many subscribers you have. That's what helps you climb the charts in iTunes. Now, it's weighted towards more recent subscribers. So the subscribers I got in 2005 and 6 don't have nearly as much power as the ones I get today, but it's still the case that ratings and reviews don't directly help you climb the charts in iTunes. But, since people tend to read them, they help people want to subscribe to your iTunes uh, feed, which that helps you climb the charts in iTunes. So, in it doesn't directly help, but it does indirectly help. So, Just wanted to clarify, just, uh, this is something that, it's all how you look at it, and in this case, I just wanted to be absolutely clear that it's not the ratings and reviews, it's the subscribers. But the ratings and reviews help you to get the subscribers. Um, This one is one I hear all the time. Oh, I need to figure out how to upload to iTunes. No, you don't. You don't upload anything to iTunes. You tell them the address of your RSS feed. That's it. Then they look at your RSS feed and put your show in their directory. So basically, they're just pointing to it. Uh, The media is still hosted at your media host. Look at last week's episode for talk about media hosting. But the... um, you don't upload anything to iTunes. So whenever you hear someone say that, they don't know what they're talking about because you just don't do that. Now, if you're selling music, yeah, sure. If you're selling TV shows, sure. But podcasting, no. It's just a directory from that perspective, and you don't upload anything. You just tell them what the address is, and they uh, get whatever they need from that. Next, iTunes is the only place that pa- that matters in podcasting. Also not true. In fact, it's becoming less true every day. Now, there was a time where, basically, if you weren't in iTunes, you didn't exist. But with things like Stitcher, uh, the iHeartRadio app, um, and just various other places, there are tons of other places that people are getting podcasts today iTunes is still the most important, but it's not the only one. And maybe 50% of 50 to 70% of traffic would come from iTunes depending on your niche, but uh, not all of it. So you shouldn't think, well, I'm in iTunes, I'm good. You should figure out where your audience is and make sure you are there. The next myth is that you only have a couple of weeks to be in New and Noteworthy on iTunes, so you better maximize them. Um, As my friend... uh, Friend is probably a stretch. 
guy that I follow and I've talked to on various occasions. We've spoken at similar events, uh, Dave Jackson. Uh, as he says, I kind of wanted to throw up in my mouth a little bit just saying that. Here's the case. New and noteworthy is not something that's both new and noteworthy. It is a list of things that are either new, they're in the new category, or they're in the noteworthy category. So it's the list of things that are in the new category and the and things that are in the noteworthy category. They're new and noteworthy. So while you are in the new category for only a certain amount of time, you can be noteworthy if you're particularly noteworthy. This is important. They decide what noteworthy is, but you can be noteworthy several times. In fact, uh, another guy that I know, um, Daniel J. Lewis, uh, again, I've talked to him, I've interacted with him. I don't know that I'd call him a friend, but I like him. I just don't think we know each other all that well that he would call me a friend. Anyway, he is the host of the Audacity to uh, podcast, and he has a podcast called Once, the Once Upon a Time fan podcast. And every time there's a new season of that show, his show becomes noteworthy. Doesn't become new. The show's existed for previous years, so it doesn't become new. There are new episodes, but there's always new episodes. So that's not it. It's noteworthy because this popular show is on once again. Noteworthy. So it's not that you only have a finite amount of time to be new and noteworthy, and if you blow that, uh, well, you just might as well quit your podcast or launch a new one. Not true at all. So don't believe that myth and don't repeat it. And finally... The last myth about iTunes that I want to talk about is new and noteworthy can make or break your podcast. No, it can't. Sorry. It just can't. Um, there was a time where when, if you got in new and noteworthy, you'd see a spike of thousands of uh, new listeners. Not anymore. Just as a... In uh, doing my research and uh, listening to people that actually have access to direct stats, uh, people like uh, Elsie Escobar on the feed, um, and she podcasts, and uh, Dave Jackson, who launched a show specifically to be a new and noteworthy and see what happens. People like that, that know a whole lot about podcasting. That's their wheelhouse. That's the thing they're known for. I kind of know some stuff about it. I've written a book about podcasting. I've been doing it for over a decade. I know some stuff about podcasting. But according to these experts, you may get a few hundred, maybe even a thousand more listens. And if you're not very good, you won't get them forever. You'll get them for a couple of episodes. So it's not the case that it makes or breaks your podcast. Maybe you'll get an initial spike, and then that'll taper off, and then you need to build from there. Find people that are interested in your show and go from there. And that is a much better way to do it, and it's, quite frankly, much more sustainable. So if you launch and things don't go your way, don't freak out. Just continue to build. Find where your audience is and talk to them and interact with them and just become their their go-to person. And I think that you'll find that you have much more success than depending on the fabled new and noteworthy. And once again, to quote Dave Jackson, I just wanted to throw up in my mouth just a little bit. So, what iTunes myths have you heard? Have you heard that, uh, you know, you get a special call from Steve Jobs beyond the grave if you're in iTunes or some sort of silliness like that? Well, just put that in the uh, comments below the show and we'll laugh about it together. 
And if you disagree with me, feel free to say it. I mean, you know, I'll probably say, well, according to this person, this, and this, uh, you know, and they did some research and they lost, launched a special, but <laughs> not to dissuade you, just, you know, we can interact, just do that below the video. If you like this show, I think you'll like my email newsletter, so go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash newsletter, and there you can uh, pick up a copy and get all kinds of free church tech tips and tricks. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video or audio. Till next time, go out and change eternity. Mm-hmm.